Blessings, blessings, everybody. Um, how is your heart this rising? Mine is full and at peace and calm. Excuse my, my bed in the background. You know, as the brand implies, everything is natural and real here um, and raw in all its forms. Um, so I wanted to come to you all. Remind myself. <laughs> Um, but we're coming to you with another episode uh, for Milky Mondays. And yes, I know it's been a really long time, um, but this mama needed a break. Um, she needed some space and um, to figure things out, right? But on the last episode, we talked about latch and hold. Um, and so in this episode, we're going to talk about some issues that you might face whenever it comes to getting a latch, right? Establishing a latch. Um, and so a lot of the, the two most common issues, right, is one, the hold, how you're holding the baby, um, which we already kind of talked about, but then the other most like major common factor is tongue tie or lip tie, right? Um, and tongue tie is going to be, mm, it's going to get graphic. Don't judge me. Okay. But, uh, huh. So you see that little attachment right there between the bottom of my tongue and the rest of my the rest of my mouth. Well, a tongue tie is going to be when that little attachment is actually further up the tongue. So instead of it being as far back as you saw mine, hi, I am here. It might be up there, right? And in which case, it'll prevent the baby from being able to take in as much of the nipple as it needs to in order to establish a good latch and in order to have a strong flow of milk coming in, right? Because the tongue isn't able to come out, right? It's not able to extend as far as it would if this is back there instead of up here, right? So that's the first one, okay? The second one is you actually have a lip tie, right? So if you pull up your tongue, right? Again, you have the same thing, right? You have that little piece of tissue that connects the bottom of your lip <laughs> to your gums, right? And sometimes that can actually, and you have it on both parts, right? Here as well, right? Even though that one isn't as major, right? As that one. But both of them prevent the baby from being able to create a suction, a vacuum on the nipple as they they should, all right? And so there's two things that usually happen. You have to excuse my hair, y'all. Mom, postpartum shedding the whole nine. Actually, it's not postpartum shedding. It's just me not taking care of my hair. But um, one of the first things you want to do, all right, in determining if there's even an issue, all right? If you know that <clears throat> you're holding your baby correctly, right? Either the football hold, the crossover, any of those, right? And one, your baby is fussy at the nipple, right? The moment you try to put them on or they're fussy when you take them off or they're, they're fussy period before, during, and after, right? Usually that's indicative of them not being satisfied or they're already, I don't want to say traumatized, but there's already an issue that they're already anticipating. So they're already being fussy, right? That's the first thing. Two, if your baby is not gaining weight, right? And so you can use whatever guideline you want. You know, if you want to use the recommendation, uh, recommend, recommended, you know, um, weight gain that most people talk about, you know, when baby is born, you know, they usually lose, um, during the first week, the first two weeks, I usually lose about a pound or so, um, or the first week when they're born. Um, but by the second week, they should already be back up to their normal birth weight. Some rec some doctors recommend that they'll be back to their normal weight birth weight between two weeks and a month, right? And then after that, they usually gain <laughs> about a half an ounce to an ounce a day. <laughs> She gets like this. Um, so if you want to use that, cool. For me, what I did is I, I monitored my baby. Um, I checked her her birth weight. Obviously, when she was born, I had I weighed her because she was a unassisted free water birth baby. Um, 
sorry. And um, so I, I, I took her weight when she was born. And then I took her weight um, every three days, the first two weeks. Just bless you, baby. All right, so we're going to try this. But I know she's going to try and get the camera. <sighs> Trials and tribulations when your nine-month-old is able to stand and able to walk about three feet. But they're still wobbly. <laughs> so she stood up too quickly and fell back onto like, <laughs> hey, baby, onto a little box. <laughs> it startled her. But, um, where was I? Oh, but what I did is I took her weight the every three days or the first two weeks um, because I just kind of wanted to get like a baseline of like what her body was doing. Um, I knew that I had a good latch, you know, because my entire nipple was in her mouth. Um, like entire nipple was in her mouth. You know, she wasn't fussy at the breast, breast, you know, and from me taking her weight every three days, like I knew that she was gaining weight. Um, and so actually she was born five pounds, 13 ounces that Friday. Um, by the time Monday came around, she was already, how, how big were you, baby? I think she was already like seven pounds and some change. Like she had already gained a good one to two pounds in a matter of days. Um, and like I said, my milk didn't come in until the second, the second day after birth. Yeah. Second or third day after birth. I have to double, I don't have my pictures to check. <laughs> I digress. <clears throat> so that's what I did. And then after that, just to make sure that I wasn't being too much of a worrisome, anxious mom, I only weighed her every week. Um, again, to just establish a baseline to see if she was going to be a baby that gained like a pound every two weeks, or if she was going to be a baby that gained a pound, you know, a pound a week, a pound a month, you know, just to gauge. Um, and so from there, I decided, you know, and monitored her weight, you know, to establish what was healthy for her. Um, so again, signs that you might have an issue with your latch is if the baby is fussy before, during, or after the breast, right? If um, they're not gaining weight, you know, according to what your pediatrician recommends or however you're intuitively guided to monitor that, if at all. All right. Um, <laughs> and so those are the two major things. Right. And then the third one is going to be if your entire nipple. Right. So the nipple and the areola. Right. So that dark circle around the nipple that has all the little dots. Those are like little receptors, like little pores. They communicate. Right. If that whole thing is not in their mouth. Right. Coupled along with the other two, then you might want to do this very, very important thing. Go see a lactation consultant. And I don't mean just any lactation consultant. I mean an IBCLC consultant to establish what's going on. All right. So that way they can help you out. All right. Um, the weight gain thing could also be an issue with your milk. And maybe you're not getting the nutrients you need. But if they're fussy... You know, the nipples not all the way in there and, and they're not gaining weight, then you definitely want to go see a consultant. All right. Someone that you trust, someone that you know is a complete expert in all things breastfeeding related. All right. Because they can help you determine if baby has a tongue tie, lip tie. But more importantly, you could probably determine that yourself. But more importantly, they can determine if that tongue tie or that lip tie is um, hindering their ability to get the nutrients and the amount of milk that they need from you. And I'm saying that because I have had individuals who their children have had lip ties, I mean, tongue ties and lip ties, but they were still able to feed and get the amount of nutrients that they needed. It wasn't hindering them, right? Their baby knew how to maneuver in such a way that they still had a strong flow, but only your consultant will be able to determine that, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So if there's any issues 
go see a consultant. And I'm saying this because a lot of women do not know about them, right? Because a lot of the times our insurance doesn't cover it or our insurance does, but we don't know that it does. Um, and it kind of prevents a lot of women from doing something that a beautiful, amazing thing that your body was created to do, right? Which is to nourish your child. And I say this because my mom tried to breastfeed me and my brother. And she said, for whatever reason, it just wouldn't work. We just, it just wouldn't take, we wouldn't latch. And I asked her, I was like, well, did you go see a consultant? And she had no idea what that was. Okay, no idea what that was. And even though, yes, that was however many years ago, it's still applicable today. All right. So go talk to someone, you know, go talk to your doula, go talk to your midwife and they'll direct you to a consultant that they trust um, to help you on your breastfeeding journey. All right. I'm going to leave this video at that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm already at 10 minutes. All right, y'all. Until next time. Peace.